According to Reuters, Alaska Airlines said it had canceled 170 flights on Sunday and a further 60 on Monday, after the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration ordered the grounding of 171 Boeing 737 MAX 9 airplanes to run inspections. The airline said cancellations would continue through the first half of the week. The Sunday cancellations affected nearly 25,000 guests, added the Seattle-based carrier, which has 65737 MAX 9 aircraft in its fleet. According to Bloomberg, sign up for the India Edition newsletter by Manaka Doshi, an insider's guide to the emerging economic powerhouse, and the billionaires and businesses behind its rise, delivered weekly. India's IT services giants may struggle to justify their valuations when they kick off Asia's reporting season this week, as earnings are expected to be the weakest in years. According to Reuters, a serious mid-air breach has landed planemaker Boeing in the regulatory crosshairs just as it was awaiting approval of new models of its best-selling MAX jet. Investigators are still trying to determine what caused a door plug to fall off from the side of a 737 MAX 9 aircraft operated by Alaska Airlines on Friday, with 171 passengers on board. According to Bloomberg, Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will retain her title as the world's longest-serving female head of government after her party swept more than half of the parliament seats in an election boycotted by her opponents and voters. Hasina's Awami League party won at least 157 of 299 seats for a simple parliament majority, according to two major television networks citing polling data. The election for one seat was postponed. According to Reuters, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway and Pilot on Sunday said they had reached an agreement to settle a Delaware lawsuit and resolve a dispute over the valuation of billionaire Jimmy Haslam's truck stop chain. Berkshire and Pilot reached an agreement to fully settle the Delaware litigation, including all claims and counterclaims, between Pilot and Berkshire Hathaway, Pilot Travel Centers, and National Indemnity Company, the companies said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, Oil dropped after Saudi Arabia cut official selling prices for all regions, underscoring a worsening outlook and outweighing concern over Red Sea tensions and supply disruptions in Libya. Global benchmark Brent fell toward $78 a barrel after rising by 2.2% last week, with West Texas Intermediate approaching $73. State producer Saudi Aramco cut its flagship Arab light price to Asia by a more than expected $2 a barrel amid persistent weakness in the global crude market. According to Bloomberg, Asian stocks are set for a steady open as focus shifts to this week's inflation reports from the US, Japan and China after mixed jobs and activity data on Friday capped a downbeat start to the year. Australian equities were little changed in early trading and contracts in Hong Kong point to a flat start, while Japanese markets are closed for a holiday. The dollar and US equity futures were steady after the SP500 rose 0.2% on Friday following reports that US jobs beat expectations but the service sector slowed. According to Reuters, the cockpit voice recorder from the Boeing 737 MAX 9 jet that suffered a plug door blowout during an Alaska Airlines flight and carried out an emergency landing on Friday was overridden by the time it was recovered, the National Transportation Safety Board chair said Saturday. NTSB Chair Jennifer Homendy said the flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder were sent to NTSB labs on Saturday to be read, but no data was available on the cockpit voice recorder because it was not retrieved by the two-hour mark, when recording restarts and previous data as a race. According to Bloomberg, Apple Inc.'s iPhone sales slump in China is deepening and the company is likely to see volumes decline further this year, according to Jefferies analysts led by Edison Lee. The iPhone maker's latest generation got off to an atypically sluggish start in China last year, which most recently expanded to a 30% year-on-year decline, Li and colleagues said in a note on Sunday, citing industry checks. The rest of the country's mobile market grew in December, with Huawei Technologies Company growing fastest on the back of its new Mate 60 device lineup. According to Bloomberg, a bigger-than-expected cut in official oil pricing to Asia by OPEC-plus leader Saudi Arabia has reinforced signs of softer physical crude market in the largest consuming region. Saudi Aramco cut the official selling price for its flagship Arab light crude to a $1.50 a barrel premium to the regional benchmark for February, the lowest since November 2021. The $2 a barrel reduction was deeper than foreseen, 
and follows a weakening of spot differentials for Middle Eastern crudes due to lackluster Chinese appetite and increased global supplies. According to Bloomberg, Thai Prime Minister Sretha Thavison urged the central bank to consider cutting borrowing costs to support the economy, signaling a new round of disagreement between fiscal and monetary policymakers. With consumer prices extending a streak of negative readings, Sretha said it provides room to pivot to easing. The Prime Minister's call for rate cuts comes within days of his urging the monetary authority to factor in risks to economic growth while setting policy. According to Bloomberg, Pakistan's dollar bonds will rally for a second year as the government is expected to secure another bailout from the International Monetary Fund, according to investors. UBS Asset Management and William Blair Investment Management see its bonds remaining attractive after almost doubling in 2023. Suleiman Rafiq Mania, an independent wealth manager in Karachi, says gains can be as much as 37% in the next 18 months. According to Reuters, United Launch Alliance, a joint venture of Boeing and Lockheed Martin, was poised for a debut launch of its powerful Vulcan rocket from Florida on Monday in a mission that will feature the first U.S. moon landing attempt in more than half a century. Aboard Vulcan, a 200-foot-tall rocket with engines made by Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, is the Peregrine Lunar Lander built by space robotics firm Astrobotic. According to Reuters, Alaska Airlines pilots reported pressurization warning lights on three earlier flights of a two-month-old Boeing 737 MAX 9 jet that made an emergency landing on Friday after a door plug tore off. National Transportation Safety Board Chair Jennifer Homendy said late on Sunday the auto pressurization fail light illuminated on December 7, January 3 and January 4, but she said it was unclear if there was any connection between those incidents and the rapid depressurization incident. According to Reuters, Carrefour says it has ditched PepsiCo products in four European countries for taking price hikes too far, but the negotiation tactic may have little impact given the size of some global brands, industry experts said. The strategy of removing products from shelves is one retailers have employed for years in the tussle over prices with suppliers, but the cost of living crisis has prompted more disputes, such as a reported spat between German retailer Adeka and U.S. Procter Gamble last year. According to Reuters, a union representing 2,100 flight attendants has reached an agreement over a new labor contract with Canadian leisure carrier Air Transat, the Canadian Union of Public Employees said on Monday, easing fears of a strike that could have crippled the carrier's operations. According to Bloomberg, a series of high-stakes deadlines this week will mark the culmination of a years-long push to launch exchange-traded funds backed by Bitcoin in the U.S. Would-be Bitcoin ETF issuers have been given until Monday morning in Washington to submit any last-minute revisions to their pending applications, Bloomberg News has reported. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission itself has until January 10 to take action on at least one of those applications, and crypto insiders have speculated the regulator will use that date to announce a slew of decisions at once. According to Reuters, Asian shares slipped into the red on Monday as Chinese stocks extended their recent retreat, and investors braced for U.S. inflation data and a corporate reporting season where robust results are needed to justify high valuations. Geopolitical tensions were also on the radar as disruptions in the Red Sea raised shipping costs in Europe, while the Israeli conflict with Hamas threatened to spread to Lebanon. According to Reuters, Donald Trump said he will be attending an appeals court hearing regarding the scope of his presidential immunity in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday, in comments in a Truth Social post on Monday. Of course I was entitled, as President of the United States and Commander-in-Chief, to immunity, Trump said in the post. According to Reuters, the U.S. healthcare sector is showing signs of life after lagging in 2023 as investors bet cheap valuations will offset a tendency to underperform during presidential election years. The SP500 healthcare sector has climbed about 6% since the start of December, doubling the gain of the broader index during that period. Its performance during 2023 overall was far less impressive, as it rose just 0.3% compared to the SP500's 24% jump. According to Reuters, China's securities regulator is allowing mutual fund managers to sell more shares than they buy each day, three sources said, removing a ban introduced late last year aimed at propping up a flagging stock market. 
The China Securities Regulatory Commission late last year barred major mutual fund companies from selling shares on a net basis on any day, answering top leadership calls to stabilize a market that was among the world's worst performers. According to Reuters, South Korean police on Monday arrested a man linked to an attack last week on opposition Democratic Party leader Lee Jae-myung, the Yonhap news agency reported. Lee was stabbed in the neck by a 67-year-old man who lunged at him with a knife after asking for his autograph during a visit to the southern port city of Busan. The man, who was only identified by his surname Kim, was arrested. According to Reuters, Russia launched a large-scale missile attack across Ukraine at the start of peak morning hours on Monday, hitting residential and industrial facilities and injuring several people, Ukraine's officials said. All of Ukraine was under air raid alerts from around 6 a.m. local time with Ukraine's air force saying the country was under several waves of cruise missile threat and in some regions ballistic missiles. According to Reuters, German industrial orders rose less than expected in November. Data from the Federal Statistics Office showed on Monday, as demand weakens. Industrial orders rose by 0.3% month-on-month on a seasonally and calendar-adjusted basis, the Federal Statistics Office said on Monday. According to Reuters, a robotic lander built by a private company was bound for the moon on Monday in an attempt to make the first U.S. lunar soft landing in half a century, after launching to space aboard a new Vulcan rocket debuted by a joint venture of Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Space robotics firm Astrobotics Peregrine Lunar Lander launched toward space at 2.18 a.m. Eastern Standard Time from Cape Canaveral, Florida on the first flight of Vulcan, a powerful rocket built by the Boeing Lockheed Venture United Launch Alliance. According to Reuters, Zeker is aiming to deliver 230,000 cars in 2024, double its deliveries in 2023, a company spokesperson said on Monday as the electric car brand of China's Geely ramps up sales of new models and expand into overseas markets. Zeker started delivery of its fourth model, the Zeker 007 sedan, in December and wants to increase sales in Europe while selling into more markets in the Middle East and Asia this year, the company said. According to Reuters, U.S. chipmaker NVIDIA plans to begin mass production in the second quarter of 2024 of an artificial intelligence chip it designed for China to comply with U.S. export rules, two people familiar with the matter said on Monday. The H20 chip is the most powerful of three China-focused chips NVIDIA developed to meet restrictions announced in October. According to Reuters, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will roll out the red carpet for hundreds of domestic and foreign investors visiting his home state of Gujarat this week for a business event, in one of his last major efforts to draw investments before a re-election bid. The vibrant Gujarat Global Summit during January 10-12 is expected to bring in around 100,000 visitors, including chief executives, business leaders, ministers and diplomats from 133 countries in what organizers have dubbed as the biggest ever gathering at the biennial event which is in its 10th edition. According to Reuters, Boeing shares listed in Frankfurt fell as much as 8% on Monday after the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration ordered the temporary grounding of some Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets fitted with a panel that blew off a jet in midair on Friday. Shares in rival manufacturer Airbus were up 2% on the Tradegate platform. According to Bloomberg, developing nation borrowers are rushing to sell debt, taking advantage of increased appetite for new bonds to lock in costs as traders continue to flip-flop over when the Federal Reserve will begin lowering interest rates. Mexico was first off the block, kicking off the year with its largest ever bond sale. Hungary, Slovenia, Indonesia and Poland quickly followed. In just four days, emerging market governments and companies closed 20 deals worth $24.4 billion the busiest start to a year on record for dollar and euro denominated debt issuance out of developing nations, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. According to Bloomberg, German factory orders rose much less than anticipated in November, a discouraging sign for Europe's largest economy that is relying on its outsized manufacturing base to regain growth. Monday's data showed a 0.3% increase in demand, falling short of analysts' expectations of a 1.1% gain. The uptick from October, which saw a 3.8% drop, was due to large orders, the statistics office said. According to Bloomberg, Malaysia's capital ABHD, which operates budget carrier Air Asia, 
will hive off its aviation business to its long-haul affiliate as the group seeks to streamline its operations and gain better access to financing. The company entered into a non-binding offer to sell its Malaysian airline unit and Air Asia Aviation Group Limited, which consists of its subsidiaries in Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines and Cambodia, to Air Asia XBHD. According to Bloomberg, U.S. corporate earnings may exceed current forecasts in 2024, powered by a strong economy and falling interest rates, said strategists at Goldman Sachs Group Inc. SP500 companies earnings per share are forecast to rise 5% to $237 this year, the team led by chief U.S. equity strategist David Costin predicted in a weekly research note. According to Bloomberg, the U.S.'s top diplomat warned the Israel-Hamas war could easily turn into a full-blown Middle East conflict, as he travels across the region to calm tensions and urge Israel to do more to protect civilians in Gaza. Fighting in Gaza continues to rage, with Israeli jets pounding the Palestinian enclave and its ground troops targeting Hamas commanders. Tensions between Israel and Hezbollah militants based in Lebanon are mounting, with near-daily skirmishes between the two and Hamas blaming Israel of assassinating a senior leader in Beirut last week. According to Reuters, the top Democrat and Republican in the U.S. Congress on Sunday agreed on a $1.59 trillion spending deal, setting up a race for bitterly divided lawmakers to pass the bills that would appropriate the money before the government begins to shut down this month. Since early last year, House of Representatives and Senate Appropriations Committees had been unable to agree on the 12 annual bills needed to fund the government for the fiscal year that began October 1 because of disagreements over the total amount of money to be spent. According to Yahoo Finance, the Fed has some new faces on its interest rate setting committee in 2024. But analysts are split about whether that will change the balance of power between hawks and doves, and thus the direction of monetary policy. The change is happening because of how the central bank divides up votes on its Federal Open Market Committee, a body that has the final say on whether rates go up or down. According to Reuters, Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag said players must have confidence in their capabilities to play at the Premier League club, given the extraordinary expectations that come with joining the record 20-time top-flight champions. According to media reports in Britain, England winger Jadon Sancho is set to rejoin Borussia Dortmund on loan, adding to the list of big money signings that have struggled to make an impact at Old Trafford. According to Reuters, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is believed to have turned the big 4-0 on Monday, but state media continued its decades of silence on his birthday. Kim's birthday is believed to be January 8, though his secretive regime has never confirmed the date. The U.S. government lists Kim's birth year as 1984, making him 40 years old this year. According to Bloomberg, Shell PLC said earnings from gas trading would be significantly higher in the fourth quarter, that profits from buying and selling oil products and chemicals will be lower. The London-based major said it benefited from seasonal shifts in the gas market and higher production of liquefied form of the fuel, which has been a key driver of profits. Shell expects its chemicals and oil products division to make a loss for the period, according to a trading update on Monday. According to Bloomberg, the freezing Arctic weather that caused havoc across the Nordic region last week has spread south to cover most of continental Europe. Minimum temperatures for Monday are forecast at minus 8.5 C in Berlin and minus 4 C in Paris, according to Maxar Technologies Inc. The mercury in Oslo will plummet to almost minus 20 C while yellow weather warnings for ice were in place for parts of the UK. According to Reuters, BT, Britain's biggest telecoms group, said it would convert the first of its street cabinets traditionally used to house cabling to an electric vehicle charging unit in a pilot that could lead to a network of 60,000 new points. The first unit will be installed at a cabinet in East Lothian, Scotland, BT said on Monday, adding that it will roll out further trials across Britain in the coming months. According to Bloomberg, distressed Korean builder Taeyong Engineering Construction won a cash infusion from its parent on Monday, bringing it a step closer toward fulfilling creditors' demands ahead of a key deadline this week. Thai Holdings said in a statement it injected 89 billion won into the indebted developer. The holdings company also pledged to implement several other measures, including kickstarting the sale of its water treatment business Ecorbit Co. Limited. According to Reuters, 
The head of France's biggest supermarket chain E. Leclerc said on Monday it was still selling Pepsi after rival Carrefour ditched PepsiCo products in the latest tug-of-war between retailers and global food giants over prices. Michel Edouard Leclerc also told BFM TV he was optimistic that food inflation in France would return to a range of 2.5% to 3% this year as consumer goods companies had become more reasonable. According to Bloomberg, Saudi Arabia's public investment fund and Singapore's GIC Private are among the investors listed as holders of riskier equity-like instruments issued by Cigna's luxury real estate unit, now caught up in insolvency proceedings in Austria. The PIF owns 287 million euros of the profit participation securities, known as Genesrect or Genoshine, while the Southeast Asian Sovereign Wealth Fund owns 85 million euros, according to the insolvency filing from Cigna Prime Selection dated December 28 seen by Bloomberg News. According to Bloomberg, Elon Musk's drug use has worried executives and board members at businesses he runs, the Wall Street Journal reported, citing unidentified people familiar with the billionaire and the companies. Musk has used LSD, cocaine, ecstasy and psychedelic mushrooms, often at private parties, the journal said, citing unnamed witnesses and others with knowledge of the matter. People close to the Tesla Inc. and SpaceX chief executive officer told the newspaper his drug use is ongoing and that in particular is consuming ketamine. Musk said in August he has a prescription to use the drug as an antidepressant. According to Bloomberg, U.S. air safety officials said they have found the fuselage panel that blew off during an Alaska Airlines flight on January 5, recovering a key piece of evidence in their probe of the Boeing County 737 MAX 9 aircraft's sudden decompression. The development will aid investigators examining what went wrong on Flight 1282, which was carrying 171 passengers from Portland, Oregon, when the emergency forced pilots to turn back. Yet the National Transportation Safety Board hasn't been able to recover some other key evidence. According to Bloomberg, Foxconn Technology Group is losing a longtime executive in India, just as the manufacturer is pushing to expand in the South Asian country. Josh Falger, the country head of Foxconn's Bharat FIH arm, is leaving the company after nine years, people familiar with the matter said. His last day will be this month, they said, asking not to be named as the matter is private. His plans going forward couldn't immediately be learned. According to Reuters, investor morale in the eurozone improved for the third consecutive month in January to its highest level since May, but a turnaround for the 20-country currency bloc is not a done deal, a survey showed on Monday. Centix's index for the eurozone rose to minus 15.8 points in January from minus 16.8 in December, below a reading of minus 15.5 estimated in a Reuters poll of analysts. According to Reuters, Apple's iPhone sales in China dropped by 30% in the first week of 2024, Jefferies analysts said in a note, adding to signs of growing competitive pressures from domestic rivals such as Huawei for the U.S. tech giant. The decline in Apple's sales was the primary catalyst for an overall double-digit drop in China's smartphone shipments for the first week, according to a note the brokerage published on Sunday. Other Android brands and Huawei achieved relatively flat growth year over year during this period, the note said. According to Reuters, Eurozone government bond yields rose on Monday after money markets scaled back late last week expectations for future policy rate cuts. Data showed that German inflation rose in December due to base effects, temporarily stopping the downward trend seen in the last months, offering the European Central Bank an argument for keeping rates steady for some time. According to Reuters, South Korea's QCells on Monday said it will supply Microsoft with 12 gigawatts of American-made solar panels through 2032 in what the companies called one of the largest ever deals of its kind. The agreement locks in substantial and stable demand for panels Qcells will make at its new $2.5 billion Georgia factory. For Microsoft, which was seeking a reliable panel provider to reduce supply chain risks, the deal will help reach its goal of powering its operations with 100% renewable energy by 2025. According to Bloomberg, China Energy Investment Corp., the country's biggest power producer, said it's well on course to overshoot its target of 40% renewables in its overall generation capacity by 2025. The state-owned company, the world's largest coal and wind power producer, 
expects the goal to be met this year due to the expansion of its renewable hubs in China's deserts and deployments of offshore wind, it said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, investors betting on a revival in Chinese stocks in the new year are seeing their resolve tested as the market has deepened its slump in the first few days of trading. Persistent concerns over the nation's economic recovery and policy uncertainty have pushed an onshore equity benchmark to its lowest in nearly five years. Foreign investors were back selling in earnest Monday, offloading the equivalent of $600 million of mainland shares. According to Bloomberg, U.S. stocks will resume last year's 24% rally only if economic growth picks up, according to Morgan Stanley's Michael Wilson. The SP500 has started 2024 on the back foot, snapping a nine-week rally as traders dial back some of their exuberance over the timing and scale of U.S. interest rate cuts. Wilson, who was bearish for most of last year even as stocks rallied, expects that shifting views on the economy will fuel stock market twists and turns throughout this year. According to Bloomberg, Saudi Arabia is set to issue a three-part dollar bond as emerging market governments rush to lock in lower costs following the drop in U.S. yields since October. The kingdom is following the likes of Mexico, Indonesia and Poland, which have issued almost $25 billion of bonds between them in 2024. That's made it the busiest start to a year on record for dollar and euro-denominated debt issuance from developing nations, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. According to Bloomberg, Elon Musk's reported drug use has Tesla Inc. board members facing a familiar quandary, having to decide what, if anything, to do about the chief executive subjecting directors and shareholders alike to great financial and legal risk. The Wall Street Journal's article describing Musk's history of recreational drug use and ongoing consumption of ketamine is the latest in a long line of tests for a board packed with the CEO's acolytes several of whom agreed less than six months ago to return $735 million to settle a lawsuit alleging they had excessively compensated themselves. According to Bloomberg, China detained the head of an overseas consulting firm for allegedly spying on the Asian nation for the British government, putting renewed focus on an industry targeted by Beijing's national security crackdown. China's spy agency said Monday that the UK's MI6 intelligence service employed the consultant from a third country to carry out espionage activities. The alleged spy, surnamed Huang, provided the UK with state secrets and intelligence, according to the Ministry of State Security's official WeChat account. According to Bloomberg, the rapid subsidence of inflation reflects the likelihood that a supply shock was its primary driver in both America and Europe, according to Eric Nielsen. Group Chief Economics Advisor at Unicredit. Speaking just days before U.S. data that may show further progress in bringing consumer prices under control, Nielsen told Francine Lacqua on Bloomberg Television that the nature of recent pressures is becoming increasingly clear. According to Bloomberg, container shipping giant China Costco Shipping Corp. is to stop delivering goods into Israel because of the threats and attacks that Houthi militants have made against vessels that sail there. Amir Shani, Deputy President at the Federation of Israeli Chambers of Commerce, an umbrella organization for more than 5,000 businesses, said that Costco informed his organization's member firms of the decision. A person with knowledge of the matter confirmed Costco won't take bookings into Israel from next week. According to Reuters, Indonesia temporarily grounded three Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes on January 6, operated by Lion Air despite different configurations from the plane that had to make an emergency landing in the U.S. last week, the transport ministry said on Monday. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration ordered the temporary grounding of 171 Boeing jets installed with the same panel that tore off an eight-week-old Alaska Airlines jet on Friday, forcing an emergency landing with a gap in the fuselage. According to Reuters, Oil prices fell by more than 1% on Monday on sharp price cuts by top exporter Saudi Arabia and a rise in OPEC output, offsetting worries about escalating geopolitical tension in the Middle East. Brent crude slipped 1.09%, or 86 cents, to $77.90 a barrel by 0344 GMT, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures shed 1.15%, or 85 cents, to $72.96 a barrel. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures slipped on Monday with Boeing tumbling after some of its jets were grounded following an incident, 
while uncertainty around interest rate cuts remained an overhang. Boeing nosedived 8.7% in trading before the bell after the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration ordered the temporary grounding of some 737 MAX 9 jets fitted with a panel that blew off an Alaska Air Group jet in midair on Friday. According to Yahoo Finance, corporate earnings season is starting back up on Wall Street. Reports from some of the nation's largest financial institutions and a crucial reading on inflation will greet investors in the week ahead. According to Reuters, BlackRock has set a fee of 0.30% for its planned spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund, which is notably lower than those charged by some peers. The asset manager disclosed the fee for its iShares Bitcoin trust on Monday. In comparison, Valkyrie Investments and Fidelity are charging fees of 0.80% and 0.39%, respectively, for their planned spot Bitcoin ETFs. According to Reuters, Regeneron Pharmaceuticals on Monday reported iDrug Islay's fourth quarter U.S. preliminary sales, which came below Wall Street expectations, as the company's blockbuster product faced pressure from a rival. The company garnered $1.34 billion in U.S. sales, while Wells Fargo analyst Mohit Bansal last week pegged consensus Wall Street estimates for U.S. sales of Islay at $1.53 billion. According to Reuters, Moderna on Monday reported preliminary 2023 sales of $6.7 billion for its COVID vaccine, surpassing the lower end of its full-year forecast, while reiterating its goal of returning to sales growth in 2025. The vaccine maker in November said it would only hit the lower end of its previous forecast range of $6 billion to $8 billion. The $6.7 billion prelim sales figure includes about $600 million of deferred revenue related to Moderna's efforts with the global vaccine alliance Gavi. According to Reuters, the pound softened slightly on Monday but remained close to its strongest in three weeks against the euro, a level touched the week before on expectations the European Central Bank will cut rates before the Bank of England. Those expectations, which depend on the British economy holding up better than the Eurozones, will be tested this week by remarks on Wednesday by Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey before Parliament and monthly GDP data due Friday. According to Reuters, Boston Scientific said on Monday it had agreed to buy medical device maker Axonics Inc. for $3.7 billion. Boston Scientific will pay $71 in cash per share, representing a 23.3% premium to the Axonix's last close. Shares of Axonix, which makes devices for adults with bladder and bowel dysfunction, jumped 22% in pre-market trading. According to Bloomberg, the European Central Bank is unlikely to lower borrowing costs before the summer, according to Governing Council member Boris Vucic. While inflation will continue to gradually ease, Officials want to be convinced of the slowdown and will await data on the Eurozone's labor market, the Croatian central bank chief said Monday. According to Bloomberg, Amazon.com Inc. shares are poised to resume their gains after a rough start to 2024, putting the stock on track for a long-awaited return to record high levels posted more than two years ago. That, at least, is the view among analysts, with some 97% of those tracked by Bloomberg recommending the cloud computing and e-commerce giants' shares. Bank of America Corp., Citigroup Inc., Deutsche Bank AG, Goldman Sachs Group Inc. and J.P. Morgan Chase Company are among firms naming it their top e-commerce or internet stock for 2024, while Oppenheimer and Roth MKM crowned it their favorite large-cap choice. According to Reuters, Utility firm Newscale Power said on Monday it will lay off about 28% of its full time employees as part of its cost saving measures. The cost saving measures, which include the removal of 154 full time employees, are expected to result in approximately $50 million $60 million in annualized savings, Newscale said. According to Reuters, German logistics company DHL Group is advising customers to take a close look at how they manage inventories as shippers switch away from the Red Sea, though trade associations said they did not expect any notable disruptions for Europe's top economy. We generally advise our customers to carefully examine their inventory strategy and, if necessary, adjust it, DHL Group said in emailed comments, adding it was able to provide alternatives to customers such as air freight or rail. According to Reuters, 
Germany's ailing economy is experiencing a bumpy start to the year with farmers launching nationwide protests against government plans to cut diesel subsidies and train drivers planning several days of strikes over wage disputes. The economy, Europe's biggest, was the weakest among its large Eurozone peers last year, as high energy costs, feeble global orders and record high interest rates took their toll. According to Bloomberg, China's share of a key emerging market equity benchmark dropped to a record low, highlighting how a bearish outlook for the world's second-largest economy is diverging from the rest of an asset class it once dominated. The Chinese stock market accounted for 23.77% of the MSCI Emerging Markets Index as of December 31, just below the 23.84% in June 2017, when the New York-based firm announced the addition of China's mainland stocks, so-called as shares, to the index. That's almost 15 percentage points below the country's peak weight of 38.5% in September 2020. According to Yahoo Finance, U.S. stock futures stumbled on Monday, with the Dow pulling lower as Boeing shares sold off and uncertainty about the prospects for interest rate cuts continued to weigh. Dow Jones Industrial Average futures sank around 0.4%, or 170 points. Futures on the benchmark SP500 and on the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 were little changed, after all three major stock indexes broke a nine-week winning stake on Friday. According to Reuters, U.S. officials have recovered a panel that blew off an Alaska Airlines airliner triggering a partial grounding of Boeing's 737 MAX 9 and sending shares in the planemaker tumbling on Monday. A door plug tore off on Friday following takeoff from Portland, Oregon, en route to Ontario. California, depressurizing the plane and forcing pilots to turn back. According to Yahoo Finance, Amazon is partnering with Omada Health, a digital platform that aims to help users maintain chronic diseases, the two companies will announce later this morning, Yahoo Finance has learned. The announcement, scheduled for 9 a.m. at the annual J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in San Francisco, signals the e-commerce giant's continued focus on getting a share of the more than $4 trillion healthcare industry. According to Reuters, Johnson Johnson said on Monday it had agreed to buy drug developer Ambrex Biopharma for $2 billion to gain access to its portfolio of targeted cancer therapies. JJ will pay $28 per share of Ambrex, which represents a premium of about 105% to the stock's last close. According to Reuters, German department store giant Galleria could file for insolvency again as early as this week, two people familiar with the matter said on Monday, joining the list of companies affected by the collapse of Cigna founder René Benko's real estate empire. The insolvency application could come as soon as Tuesday or Wednesday, according to one source. The probability is high, said another person familiar with the matter. According to Reuters, Israel is carrying out an unprecedented wave of deadly strikes in Syria targeting cargo trucks, infrastructure and people involved in Iran's weapons lifeline to its proxies in the region, six sources with direct knowledge of the matter told Reuters. The sources, including a Syrian military intelligence officer and a commander in the regional alliance backing Damascus, said Israel had shifted strategies following the October 7 rampage by Hamas fighters into Israeli territory and the ensuing Israeli bombing campaigns in Gaza and Lebanon. According to Bloomberg, the coming 12 months are shaping up as the year of the interest rate cut. After racing ahead with the most aggressive tightening campaign in decades during 2022 and 2023, central banks around the world are poised to begin easing monetary policy as inflation continues to retreat. According to Reuters, Intuit said on Monday it has made its tax preparation tool, TurboTax, available within its personal finance portal and accounting software to tap a wider pool of users this tax season. The integration into Credit Karma and QuickBooks Online is part of the company's plan to help expand the use of what is already the U.S. market leader in tax management software. According to Bloomberg, Chile's consumer prices tumbled more than expected in December, supporting the central bank's guidance for another sharp interest rate cut later this month. Prices fell 0.5% last month, more than all estimates in a Bloomberg survey in which the median forecast was for a drop of just 0.1%. Annual inflation eased to 3.9%, the National Statistics Agency reported on Monday.
A closely watched price gauge that excludes volatile items increased 5.4% in the 12 months through December, down from 6% the month before. According to Reuters, Egypt's inflation rate probably fell for a third straight month in December on lower food prices, but may see an uptick in coming months after recent government price rises and a possible currency devaluation, a Reuters poll showed on Monday. Annual urban consumer inflation is seen edging down to 33.4% in December from 34.6% in November, according to the median forecast of 14 analysts polled. According to Bloomberg, Blackstone Inc. raised $1.3 billion for its first private equity fund for rich individuals, achieving one of the biggest initial hauls for a fund of its kind despite a delayed launch. The cash pile, disclosed in a filing Monday, underscores the intensifying race among alternative investment firms to court private wealth as key sources of institutional money dry up. According to Reuters, the Dow was poised for a lower open on Monday on a tumble in Boeing shares following the grounding of some its jets, while the other major U.S. indexes eyed a subdued open on uncertainty around the timing of interest rate cuts. Boeing slid 6.2% in pre-market trading after the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration ordered the temporary grounding of some 737 MAX 9 jets fitted with a panel that blew off an Alaska Air Group jet in midair on Friday. According to Bloomberg, container shipping is set to face a crunch ahead of the Lunar New Year holiday as how the attacks in the Red Sea restrict capacity, a major industry consultant said. The coming weeks are likely to be very difficult as trade volumes ramp up before Lunar New Year, which begins February 10, according to Philip Damis, managing director and head of supply chain advisors at the company. Diversions as a result of the attacks are forcing ships to sail thousands of miles further than normal and are therefore restricting the amount of vessels able to carry goods. According to Yahoo Finance, Boeing stock tumbled on Monday falling more than 7% in pre-market trading after the Federal Aviation Administration ordered the temporary grounding of some Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets. The planes under question are fitted with a panel that flew off an Alaskan Airlines plane in midair on Friday. The order from the FAA will impact 171 planes, per the New York Times. According to Reuters, Synetic, the UK's largest vehicle salvage company has partnered with Ali Energy to provide salvaged electric vehicle battery packs for the startup to use for energy storage systems, the two companies said on Monday. Ali will test and buy EV packs from Synetic, a unit of IAA and part of Canada's RB Global Group, to use in its 300 kilowatt hour battery storage system. Each one uses four salvaged EV battery packs, which is enough to power a factory or 50 homes for a day. Ali will lease those packs to customers. According to Reuters, as Kim Jong-hee huddled in a bomb shelter on South Korea's Yeonpyeong Island, scared and confused with around 250 other people, memories flooded back of the day in 2010 when North Korean troops shelled near their homes. Authorities told them to take shelter on Friday as North-South tensions spiked again. This time no one aimed any shells at the small patch of land just on the southern side of the two Koreas disputed maritime border. According to Reuters, a section of railroad near the city of Nizhny Tagil in Russia's Urals region was hit by a bang. TASS and RBC news agencies reported on Monday, citing the transport prosecutor's office. Russian mainstream media frequently uses the term bang as a euphemism for a blast. According to Reuters, energy major Shell has entered into a deal to buy 2 million tons of liquefied natural gas per year from the Kasi Lisums LNG. Partners in the Canadian project said on Monday. According to Reuters, healthcare dealmakers are making their way to San Francisco for a major industry conference, optimistic that more deals are in the offing after a wave of biotech company takeovers at the end of last year. The four day JP Morgan Healthcare Conference beginning on Monday is expected by organizers to attract over 8,000 people, including delegations from the world's largest drug makers a signal of a return to business as usual after fewer participants were invited last year over COVID-19 concerns. According to Reuters, Bank of America will take a charge of about $1.6 billion in the fourth quarter as it phases out the use of a Bloomberg interest rate benchmark. The non-cash and pre-tax earnings charge was triggered by the announcement by Bloomberg that they will stop publishing its short-term bank yield index in 2024 
which the bank uses for some commercial loan contracts. According to Bloomberg, as spot Bitcoin ETF hopefuls rush to file their final documents with U.S. regulators, a key difference is emerging among the applicants in their proposed fee structures. At the top end, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which would carry a 1.5% fee if the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission approves its conversion into an exchange-traded fund. While that would be lower than GBTC's current 2% fee, it comes well above its competitors. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden is not considering firing Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin over the Pentagon chief's failure to disclose a hospitalization for days, a White House official said on Monday. Austin, who sits just below Biden at the top of the chain of command of the U.S. military, withheld his hospitalization on New Year's Day from the president in the public for days. According to Yahoo Finance, Apple will release the new Vision Pro headset in the U.S. on February 2, the company announced Monday, in what CEO Tim Cook has described as the dawn of spatial computing. Customers can pick up the headset, which sells for $3,499 with 256 gigabytes of storage, at U.S. Apple Store locations and the online store. Pre-orders for the device will begin on January 19, the company said. According to Bloomberg, Merck Company has agreed to acquire cancer drug maker Harpoon Therapeutics Inc. for $680 million as it seeks to solidify its leadership position in the profitable oncology space. The drug maker will pay $23 a share for South San Francisco-based Harpoon, it said in a statement on Monday that confirmed an earlier report by Bloomberg News. According to Reuters, Blue Chip Index Dow slipped to a fresh two-week low on Monday as Boeing shares nosedived following the grounding of some its jets, while a rebound in megacaps and chip stocks supported the other U.S. stock indexes. According to Reuters, the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday declined to hear a bid by major fossil fuel companies and an industry trade group to move a lawsuit filed by Minnesota accusing them of worsening climate change out of state court and into federal court, the energy industry's favored venue. Exxon Mobil Corp., Coke Industries and the American Petroleum Institute had asked the justices to review a March decision by the St. Louis-based 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. That court found that Minnesota's lawsuit accusing the energy industry of engaging in decades of deceptive marketing to undermine climate science and the public's understanding of the dangers of burning fossil fuels belonged in state court, where it was originally filed. According to Yahoo Finance, Top congressional leaders are now trying to sell their members on a $1.6 trillion top-line federal spending deal announced over the weekend. But a wave of opposition, mostly from the right but even some from the left, in the hours since the deal was announced underscores that averting a shutdown remains far from a sure thing. According to Yahoo Finance, AMD is bringing the AI PC race to the world of desktop computers at CES 2024 with the debut of what it says is the world's first desktop processor with a dedicated neural processing unit. Coming to AMD's upcoming Ryzen 8000G series chips, which hit the market January 31st, the NPU is designed to handle AI-based tasks on your desktop computer without having to send data to the cloud. According to Reuters, Johnson Johnson has come to a tentative agreement to pay about $700 million for settling claims by over 40 U.S. states that it wrongfully marketed its talc-based baby powder, Bloomberg News reported on Monday. The settlement would avert potential lawsuits alleging JJ hid any links between the talc in its powder and various cancers, the report said citing people familiar with the deal. According to Reuters, the administration of U.S. President Joe Biden will release a final rule as soon as this week that will make it more difficult for companies to treat workers as independent contractors rather than employees that typically cost a company more, an administration official said. The U.S. Department of Labor rule, which was first proposed in 2022 and is likely to face legal challenges, will require that workers be considered employees entitled to more benefits and legal protections than contractors when they are economically dependent on a company. According to Reuters, Johnson Johnson and Merck on Monday announced plans to buy cancer therapy developers on the first day of a major U.S. healthcare conference, igniting what industry participants hope will be a strong year for deals after a solid end to 2023. Deals announced on Monday had a combined equity value of more than $6 billion, including one by medical device maker Boston Scientific for Axonics Inc. 
that follows roughly $25 billion worth of U.S. listed biotech deals last month, according to data provider LSCG Deals Intelligence. According to Reuters, U.S. regional banks have a tougher road to growing profits in 2024 as they face pressure to pay more to depositors versus larger peers while demand from borrowers stays subdued. With the outlook for interest rates more uncertain, regional lenders' earnings will also be restrained because they are tied into securities holdings that are losing money on paper instead of making loans or investing in higher-yielding assets, said analysts. According to Reuters, Volkswagen presented its first vehicles featuring a voice assistant that integrates chat GPT technology at the CES Electronics Trade Fair in Las Vegas on Monday, enabling drivers to have researched content read to them during their drive. The chatbot, integrated via a partnership with Serence Inc., can control entertainment in the car and answer general knowledge questions. In future, it could converse with drivers and interact in other ways, the carmaker said in a statement. According to Yahoo Finance, despite elevated interest rates, geopolitical uncertainty, and higher prices in general, luxury automaker Rolls-Royce Motorcars reported record sales for 2023, as its ultra-high net worth clientele continued buying bespoke automobiles. The Goodwood, England-based company reported 6,032 cars sold to clients, the most in its 119-year history, despite continuing economic uncertainties and market volatility, the company said in a statement. Though it was a record year, Rolls only sold 11 more cars than it did in 2022, when sales jumped a healthy 7.8%. According to Bloomberg, Israel killed a Hezbollah commander in South Lebanon, AFP reported, amid rising concerns the war with Hamas will escalate into a wider Middle Eastern conflict. The senior member of the Iran-backed group was killed by a strike on his car, the news agency said Monday citing a security official who asked not to be identified. AFP did not name the commander. According to Reuters, U.S. consumers' projection of inflation over the short run fell to the lowest level in nearly three years in December, the New York Federal Reserve said in a report on Monday. Inflation one year from now is expected to be at 3 percent, the lowest reading since January 2021, versus a projection of 3.4 percent in November the regional Fed bank said in its latest survey of consumer expectations. Poll respondents saw inflation three years from now at 2.6 percent, compared to 3 percent in November, while price pressures five years ahead were at 2.5 percent versus 2.7 percent in November. According to Reuters, Boeing early on Monday shared instructions with airlines for inspecting the 737 MAX 9 fleet, the company confirmed on Monday after 171 MAX planes were grounded by U.S. regulators on Saturday following an accident where a cabin panel ripped off an Alaska Airlines jet while in midair. The instructions, known formally as a multi-operator message, are a key step to allow airlines to complete or certify inspections have been conducted that comply with the Federal Aviation Administration's directive that would allow them to put planes back in service. According to Yahoo Finance, NVIDIA is surfing the AI wave into CES 2024 with the debut of its GeForce RTX 40 Super Series of desktop graphics cards. The lineup, which is made up of the high-end RTX 4080 Super, RTX 4070T Super, and RTX 4070 Super, is primarily designed for gaming, but NVIDIA is also pitching it as cadre of AI powerhouses. The RTX 4080 Super starts at $999 and is 1.4x faster than the RTX 3080T. The RTX 4070T Super, meanwhile, is 1.6x faster than the RTX 3070T. But, according to the company, those performance gains jump significantly when you add in NVIDIA's AI-powered deep learning super sampling. According to Reuters, KKR plans to notify the European Union's antitrust authorities by the end of January of its planned buyout of Telecom Italia's fixed access network, two sources close to the matter said on Monday. Italy's former phone monopoly agreed in November to sell its prized landline grid to the U.S. fund in a deal worth up to €22 billion Euros which is aimed at significantly reducing TIM's debt and staff. According to Reuters, Growth in the global electric vehicle market is set to slow to 27.1% this year as a reduction in state subsidies makes the cars less appealing to buyers, according to research firm Canalis. 
The figure follows an estimated growth of 29% in 2023 at 13.7 million units, when government incentives help the adoption of EVs, Canalis said in its report. According to Reuters, Shell has entered into a deal to buy 2 million tons of liquefied natural gas per year from Cassie Leesum's LNG, partners in the Canadian project said on Monday, as the energy giant looks to strengthen its LNG portfolio in Canada. Under the deal, Volumes will be supplied from the floating facility in British Columbia and will serve mainly customers in Asia, the partners said. According to Reuters, Twilio said on Monday it has appointed insider Kozima Shipchandler as the new CEO and expects its fourth quarter revenue to be above the top end of its earlier forecast range, sending the cloud communications firm's shares up about 7%. Shipchandler who had joined the company as finance chief in 2018 and was most recently president at Twilio Communications, succeeds Jeff Lawson. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen will travel to Boston on Wednesday in another trip to promote the benefits of the Biden administration's clean energy tax credits for the economy ahead of the start of the 2024 presidential nominating contests. Yellen will make remarks at Roxbury Community College's Center for Smart Building Technology where she will see a range of energy efficiency upgrades expected to save the school up to $800,000 on its energy bills, the Treasury said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, Argentina isn't seeking a new program in talks with the International Monetary Fund nor is it requesting fresh funding beyond its existing $44 billion aid program, President Javier Miley's spokesman said. Economy Minister Luis Caputo will meet with IMF staff Monday afternoon after days of technical meetings between government officials and staff, Malay Communications Chief Manuel Adorni told reporters in Buenos Aires. According to Reuters, U.S. energy group Constellation Energy's Everett liquefied natural gas import plant in Massachusetts took delivery of LNG from Trinidad over the weekend, LSCG data showed. The BW Boston tanker delivered about 2.7 billion cubic feet of natural gas as LNG, its second cargo to Everett this winter after another from Trinidad in December. According to Reuters, Tiger Woods, who has worn Nike apparel since first signing with the company in 1996, has parted ways with the sportswear giant, the 15 times major champion said on Monday in a social media post. Woods had been a brand ambassador for Nike since 1996 when, as a 20-year-old, he signed a five-year, $40 million contract upon turning pro in what was the start of one of the most lucrative endorsement deals in sports history. According to Bloomberg, NVIDIA Corp., whose chip technology dominates in data centers used to create artificial intelligence software, announced new products to help the personal computer industry lure consumers with IPCs. NVIDIA unveiled three new desktop graphics chips with extra components that will let gamers, designers and other computer users make better use of AI on their personal machines without having to rely on remote services accessed over the internet. The chips, updated versions of existing offerings, will be offered at a great new price, the company said Monday in a presentation at the CES trade show. According to Reuters, Canada's anti-money laundering agency is increasing its reliance on artificial intelligence to detect suspicious transactions, betting the use of the latest technology will help better fight financial crimes, a top official said. The Financial Transactions and Reports Analysis Centre raised a few eyebrows last month when it fined the country's two biggest banks, Royal Bank of Canada and CIBC, for a total of C$9 million for violations that included failing to submit suspicious transaction reports setting a record for fines issued on individual banks. According to Reuters, French Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne resigned on Monday, as President Emmanuel Macron seeks to give a new impetus to his second mandate ahead of European Parliament elections and the Paris Olympics this summer. According to Reuters, Bristol Myers Squibb CEO Christopher Borner said on Monday the drugmaker expects to add 16 new products to its portfolio by the end of the decade. The drugmaker said it would focus on licensing, partnerships and bolt-on purchases as opposed to large acquisitions after signing two multi-billion dollar deals last month. According to Reuters, a U.S. judge on Monday granted a large group of Venezuela-linked creditors rights to participate in a January auction of shares in the parent of Houston-based refiner Citgo Petroleum. 
a precedent-setting lawsuit by Canadian miner Crystalex Corp formally tied Venezuela-owned Citgo to the South American country's debts and opened the door to some $24 billion in claims being applied to the refining firm through an auction of shares in a Citgo parent whose only asset is the oil refiner. According to Bloomberg, Duolingo Inc., the maker of language learning software, is cutting some contractors as the app uses generative artificial intelligence to create more content. About 10% of contractors were offboarded, a company spokesperson said Monday. We just no longer need as many people to do the type of work some of these contractors were doing. Part of that could be attributed to AI, the spokesperson said. According to Reuters, Netflix has defeated a lawsuit filed by shareholders in a federal court in California that accused the streaming entertainment company of hiding the extent to which account sharing was hindering its growth. A Texas-based investment trust sued in May 2022, after Netflix shares lost a third of their value when the company said subscribers were decreasing for the first time in a decade. The lawsuit sought damages on behalf of investors who bought Netflix shares between January 2021 and April 2022. According to Reuters, Apple has challenged EU tech rules designating its five app stores as a single core platform service subject to onerous obligations, saying that EU regulators have misinterpreted and misapplied the new legislation that took effect last May. The company also disputed the characterization of its operating system iOS as an important gateway for business users to reach end users and the interoperability obligation that goes with that label. According to Yahoo Finance, Wall Street is ready for the next big media merger. As companies in the space face challenges such as cord cutting, a tough ad environment, and more pressure to turn profits, many are re-evaluating their portfolios. That means a breakup, or outright sale, of one or more of America's biggest media names could be in the cards next year, analysts say. According to Yahoo Finance, after a record year in 2023, Eli Lilly, fueled by the success of its GLP-1 drug, terzepatide, used in Monjaro for diabetes and Zepbound for obesity, isn't slowing down in the space, knowing competitors are nipping at its heels. The two Lilly products are competing head-to-head with Novo Nordisk's Ozempic, for diabetes, and Wegovi, for obesity, for the first time in the market this year. According to Reuters, Car parts maker Valio partnered with Zuta Core to supply advanced cooling systems to data centers, the French and U.S. companies said in a joint statement on Monday. The four-year commercial agreement, of which the financial terms were not disclosed, was announced on the sides of the CES Technology Conference in Las Vegas in the United States. According to Reuters, U.S. homebuyer confidence improved in December, with more homeowners anticipating that mortgage rates would fall further this year but it could take some time for housing supply to recover as many remain hesitant to sell their homes. Mortgage finance agency Fannie Mae said on Monday its home purchase sentiment index rose 2.9 points to 67.2 in December. It was up 6.2 points year over year. According to Reuters, a soft landing economic scenario in the United States could boost an array of stocks ranging from healthcare to industrials to small cap shares. Depending on how strong growth is, Morgan Stanley strategists said in a note on Monday, most market participants and macro forecasters expect a soft landing for 2024, which involves muted economic growth, falling inflation and more accommodative monetary policy from the Federal Reserve, the Morgan Stanley equity strategists led by Michael Wilson said. According to Bloomberg, Chinese authorities indicated they may lower the amount of money banks must set aside as reserves to boost lending even after the central bank provided a massive amount of liquidity via other tools in recent weeks. The People's Bank of China may use open market operations, medium-term lending facilities and reserve requirements among other monetary policy tools to provide strong support for reasonable growth in credit, Zhou Lan, head of PBOC's monetary policy department told the official Xinhua news agency. According to Bloomberg, Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta President Rafael Bostic said inflation has come down more than he expected and is on a path today to reaching the Fed's 2% goal, though it's too early to declare victory. We are on a path to 2% today, Bostic said Monday in a speech to the Rotary Club of Atlanta. The goal is to make sure we stay on the path. According to Bloomberg, Alcoa Corp., 
is preparing to announce that production will be curtailed at one of its three Western Australian refineries as the top U.S. aluminum producer begins to reckon with cost-cutting measures. Alcoa will curtail its Quinana Alumina refinery sometime this year, according to a person familiar with the decision who asked not to be identified since they aren't authorized to speak publicly about the matter. The Quinana curtailment will not be a closure, the person said, noting that the facility is producing at about 80% capacity. According to Reuters, Eli Lilly CEO David Ricks on Monday said the company's powerful weight loss drug Zepbound hit 25,000 new prescriptions per week at the end of December, and that its 2024 supply may not be enough to meet demand. I think it's important to set expectations, that we're working hard to fulfill demand, he told Reuters at the annual JP Morgan Health Conference in San Francisco. According to Bloomberg, with the Federal Reserve telegraphing plans to begin slowing the pace of its balance sheet unwind, market participants are rushing to determine just how soon the end of quantitative tightening could start. Strategists at Bank of America Corp. and Barclays PLC predict that the central bank is likely to begin tapering the program in April, with the runoff wrapping up by midsummer. Deutsche Bank AG expects the unwind start in June while Morgan Stanley is telling clients that policymakers want to give markets plenty of time to prepare, and won't act until September. According to Reuters, the Federal Reserve's dual goals of lowering inflation and maintaining low unemployment are not yet in conflict, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic said on Monday. The risk of that possibility has definitely gone up, with inflation slowing and some signs hiring has also begun to ebb in many parts of the economy. Bostic said in comments to reporters after a community event in Atlanta. According to Reuters, activist investors are expected to launch more and bolder campaigns for change among European companies in the year ahead, advisors told Reuters, after a record number in 2023. Europe was for years something of a backwater for activists as a company's management often had closer ties with local unions, sometimes with governments and often with big investors, than in other parts of the world, giving them more protection. According to Bloomberg, the monster run in equities and other risk assets that shape the final stretch of 2023 has room to run well into the new year if inflation continues to ebb, according to strategists at BlackRock Inc.'s Investment Institute. Momentum from the Federal Reserve's dovish shift last month may power the stock market, well into 2024, if price pressures continue to ease, according to a team led by Gene Boyvin, BII's head of research, and global chief investment strategist Wei Li. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden has appointed Jennifer Fain, formerly of the U.S. Export-Import Bank, to head the Inspector General's office at the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation as that agency reckons with a workplace sexual harassment scandal, the office announced on Monday. Why it's important Fain takes over as the top banking regulator faces multiple probes of an allegedly toxic workplace culture where sexual harassment in many cases went unchecked. According to Reuters, U.S. banks are expected to dominate corporate bond issuance following several major players' earnings on Friday and early next week, according to bond investors and analysts. January has historically served as the largest bond-issuing month for banks when compared to the rest of the year. The last seven Januaries saw an average $22.58 billion in issuance from the big six banks, according to Informa Global Markets data. According to Reuters, Canadian officials are meeting with representatives of Honda Motor Company this week, a government source said, following a news report from Sunday that said the carmaker was considering building an almost 2 trillion yen electric vehicle plant in the country. The Ottawa talks will involve several different federal departments, said the source familiar with the file who was not authorized to speak on the record. According to Reuters, Mosaic expects the total demand for fertilizer in Brazil to reach 46 million metric tons this year backed by optimism with the country's second corn crop as rains return to some producing regions, an executive said on Monday. The figure would be above the record 45.8 million tons registered in 2021, as well as the 45 million tons estimated for last year. According to Reuters, actor Jonathan Majors, who was dropped by Disney's Marvel after being found guilty last month of attacking his ex-girlfriend, said in an interview on Monday that he was responsible for problems with the relationship but not for her injuries. In his first televised remarks since a New York jury found him guilty in December, 
Majors told ABC News he should have never been in the car with his then-girlfriend. Prosecutors alleged Majors assaulted her in a hired car in March, leaving her with a broken finger and other injuries. According to Reuters, the Nasdaq gained more than 1% for the first time in 2024 on Monday, as a fall in yields helped lift megacap stocks, while a sharp drop in Boeing shares held the Dow Industrials near the unchanged mark. Megacaps such as Amazon.com and Alphabet gained about 2% as Treasury yields fell ahead of readings on inflation and a new supply of government debt this week, with the benchmark 10-year U.S. Treasury yield hitting a low of 3.966% on the session. According to Bloomberg, four of New York City's five public employee pension funds are boosting their allocations to illiquid investments like private equity in an effort to hit an annual investment return goal. Boards of directors for the retirement funds for teachers, police officers, firefighters and civil servants voted late last year to raise the share of assets to be invested in so-called alternative investments, which include hedge funds, private real estate and infrastructure, to a range of 29% to 35%, up from 23% to 29%. The increase, effective immediately, comes about a year after New York State raised the cap on how much of pensions total assets can be put into alternatives. According to Bloomberg, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said extending all the 2017 tax cuts won by former President Donald Trump would lead to serious concerns over the federal budget deficit. If he returns to office, Trump intends to make the individual cuts from the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act permanent and to keep corporate tax levels unchanged, according to people familiar with the matter. According to Yahoo Finance, used car prices tumbled 7.0% in 2023 the second year in a row of falling prices in the sector after a massive pandemic-era run-up. The Mannheim Used Vehicle Value Index, which tracks used vehicle prices paid at wholesale auctions on a seasonally adjusted basis in the U.S., ended the month of December down 0.5% compared to November. For the year, used prices fell 7.0% compared to a year ago to a 204.0 reading, and are now down 21% compared to December of 2021. According to Bloomberg, U.S. consumer borrowing surged in November by the most in a year on a jump in credit card balances as the holiday shopping season kicked into high gear. Total credit rose $23.8 billion after rising a revised $5.8 billion in October, according to Federal Reserve data out Monday. The figure well exceeded the highest estimate in a Bloomberg survey of economists, which had a median forecast of $8.6 billion. According to Yahoo Finance, Americans haven't felt this optimistic about the housing market in 20 months, a new survey found, but still high home prices may threaten to blunt that re-emerging confidence. Fannie Mae's gauge of housing sentiment jumped 2.9 points in December to 67.2, its highest level since April 2022. The boost was driven by increased optimism that mortgage rates will soften over the course of the new year. According to Reuters, White House officials met on Monday with about a dozen leaders from venture capital firms in the technology and defense industries in an effort to reinforce the Biden administration's interest in supporting Ukraine's access to cutting-edge U.S. equipment, senior administration officials said. The conversation focused on a number of systems, including unmanned aerial systems, how to counter incoming unmanned aerial systems, and then also addressing the demining challenge, one of the officials told a group of reporters during a telephone call following the five-hour meeting. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields fell on Monday, weighed down in part by a New York Federal Reserve report saying consumers expect lower inflation as well as weaker income and spending over the next several years. Volume was thinner than usual with Japan closed overnight for a holiday and a light economic calendar. According to Reuters, the founder of Archegos Capital Management, the once $36 billion private investment firm that collapsed spectacularly in 2021, on Monday sought to block prosecutors from introducing huge quantities of trading data at his upcoming fraud trial, citing their grave failure in withholding the data for 17 months. In a filing in federal court in Manhattan, Bill Wong said the defense learned on Friday that prosecutors had failed to produce 14 gigabytes of data, comprising 27 million rows and 63 columns, despite having obtained them in November 2021. According to Reuters, 
Exxon Mobil's write-down of about $2.5 billion of troubled California properties aims to end five decades of offshore oil production in the state, but a full exit from those assets could take some time. Sable Offshore, a company created in 2020, agreed more than a year ago to pay $643 million for Exxon's Santa Inez oil and gas operation off the coast of Santa Barbara. The pending sale triggered the write-down of the property's book value in Exxon's fourth quarter earnings. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets. Tokyo markets will reopen on Tuesday after a long weekend with consumer price and spending data to take in early Tuesday and must decide what to make of the strong tech-led rally on Wall Street after Friday's directionless trading. According to Reuters, Federal Reserve Governor Michelle Bowman on Monday said the U.S. central bank's monetary policy appears sufficiently restrictive to bring inflation back down to the Fed's 2% target. Her remarks, which also indicated a willingness to support eventual interest rate cuts as inflation falls, mark a change from her long-held view that further policy tightening will likely be necessary to bring inflation under control. According to Reuters, video game software provider Unity Software will target laying off approximately 25% of its workforce, or 1,800 jobs, the company said in a regulatory filing and internal company memo on Monday. This is the San Francisco-based company's largest layoff ever, with completion expected by the end of March, the company said. While Unity is not widely recognized outside the gaming industry, over 1.1 million game creators rely on its software toolkit each month, including the maker of the popular Pokemon Go, Beat Saber, and Hearthstone games. According to Reuters, Canada's main stock index gained on Monday boosted by tech stocks even as energy shares weighed down the index. According to Reuters, a U.S. government watchdog's plans to supervise companies like Apple and Alphabet's Google that provide digital wallets and payment apps to consumers risks needlessly stifling innovation and keeping some players out of the market, a main tech lobby group said on Monday. The warnings from the Computer Communications Industry Association, whose members also include Amazon, Facebook parent Meta and X, formerly known as Twitter, responded to November's proposal by the U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which said tech giants' smartphone payments and wallet services rivaled traditional payment methods but lacked the same consumer safeguards. According to Bloomberg, Bank of America Corp. took a roughly $1.6 billion charge tied to the finance industry's shift away from the London Interbank offered rate benchmark, a cost the company said will eventually be made up as income. The net non-cash, pre-tax charge was booked in the final quarter of 2023, and presented in revenue through market-making and similar activities, it said in a filing Monday. The bank said it expects the $1.6 billion will be recognized back into the company's interest income in subsequent periods through 2026. According to Yahoo Finance, Two Federal Reserve officials said Monday they believe that holding interest rates at current levels for some time could bring inflation back down to the central bank's target, pouring cold water on Wall Street expectations that cuts could begin in the first quarter. One of these officials, Fed Governor Michelle Bowman, kept the prospect of interest rate hikes on the table should progress on inflation stall. According to Reuters, Manchester United's Diogo Dalit and Bruno Fernandes scored in each half to secure a 2-0 win at Wigan Athletic in the FA Cup fourth round on a bitterly cold night at DW Stadium on Monday. The victory over the third-tier side was a welcome relief for the 12-time FA Cup winners, who were out of Europe in the League Cup and languishing eighth in the Premier League. According to Reuters, utility firm Eversource Energy said on Monday it would record an after-tax impairment charge, other than temporary of $1.4 billion to $1.6 billion in the fourth quarter related to some wind projects. Shares of the company fell nearly 3% in trading after the bell. According to Reuters, police responded on Sunday night to an apparent swatting call falsely reporting a shooting at the home of U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin, the judge presiding over the criminal case charging former President Donald Trump with attempting to overturn his 2020 election defeat. The incident marked the latest in a string of swatting attacks nationally in which individuals have falsely reported crimes in progress to trigger emergency responses by police and get them to respond to particular locations. According to Bloomberg, JetBlue Airways Corp. 
Chief Executive Officer Robin Hayes will step down next month after leading the carrier through a recent failed partnership with one airline and the pending acquisition of another. Hayes will be replaced on February 12 by Joanna Gerardy, 51, a nearly 20-year JetBlue veteran who is currently serving as president, the company said in a statement Monday. She will become the first female CEO at JetBlue and the first woman to lead a major U.S. air carrier. According to Bloomberg, BlackRock Inc., ARK and several other prospective issuers of exchange-traded funds investing directly in Bitcoin in the U.S. filed amended forms for their applications on Monday with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Fidelity, Invesco and Galaxy Digital and WisdomTree were among other firms that filed amended S-1 applications with the SEC. The regulator has until January 10 to take action on at least one of their applications, and crypto insiders have speculated the regulator will use that date to announce a slew of decisions at once. According to Reuters, United Airlines has found loose bolts on multiple 737 MAX 9 aircraft, it said on Monday, referring to the Boeing model grounded after a cabin panel blew off an Alaska Airlines-operated plane in mid-flight Friday. U.S. aircraft safety expert John Cox. According to Reuters, Pfizer will remain aggressive in trying to break into the lucrative obesity market, even after dropping a high-profile weight loss drug candidate late last year due to strong side effects, Chief Executive Albert Borla said on Monday. Pfizer's position is that we believe that obesity is a place that we have the ability to play and win. So we will have to play. Borla told reporters ahead of his presentation at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in San Francisco. According to Reuters, microchip technology on Monday forecast a further drop in its third quarter revenue, citing lower shipment levels and a weak economy. Shares of the company fell 4.1% in trading after the bell. According to Bloomberg, Asian stocks are poised to track Wall Street gains following a big tech rally on Monday which buoyed U.S. stocks at the start of a week that brings key inflation data and bank earnings. Futures point to gains for shares in Japan, Hong Kong and Australia in early trading Tuesday. The Nasdaq 100 outperformed, with NVIDIA Corp. surging after announcing new artificial intelligence products for personal computers. Boeing Company sank as its 737 MAX 9 model was temporarily grounded by authorities. Bitcoin rose above $47,000 for the first time since April 2022. According to Yahoo Finance, the first U.S. attempt to return to the moon hit a major snag on Monday after Pittsburgh-based Astrobotics Lunar Lander suffered a problem with its propulsion system hours after liftoff. In a statement, the company said the system failure was causing a critical loss of propellant and forcing the firm to assess what alternative mission profiles may be feasible at this time. According to Reuters, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was due to meet Israeli leaders on Tuesday in his quest to prevent the Gaza conflict from growing into a regional conflagration as the Israeli military said its fight against Hamas will rage all year. Blinken arrived in Tel Aviv late Monday to brief Israeli officials on his two days of talks with Arab leaders on ending the war triggered by Hamas militants' attack on Israel that by Israeli tallies killed about 1,200 people on October 7. According to Bloomberg, Samsung Electronics Company posted its sixth straight quarter of declining operating profit, reflecting stubbornly weak demand for consumer electronics globally. Korea's largest company reported a 35% fall in operating income to 2.8 trillion won, versus the 3.7 trillion won average of analysts' estimates. Revenue came to 67 trillion won, compared with projections for 70.31 trillion won. According to Reuters, Japan's Estella's Pharma said on Monday the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has declined to approve its experimental drug to treat a type of gastric cancer citing issues related to a third-party manufacturer. The FDA has not raised any concerns related to the clinical data, and is not requesting additional clinical studies, Estella's said. According to Bloomberg, in the industrial hub of Wuxi near Shanghai, car owners recently took part in China's largest experiment to rewire the grid and take advantage of its world-leading fleet of electric vehicles. Instead of charging up after plugging in, 50 EVs did it the other way around. For 30 minutes, the cars combined to feed around 2 megawatts of electricity into the grid, enough to fully power 133 houses for a day, according to a report from state-owned CCTV.
According to Bloomberg, consumer price gains in Tokyo slowed for a second month in December, in a sign that cost push inflation may be easing while thrifty consumers also cut back on discretionary outlays. Consumer prices excluding fresh food rose 2.1% in the capital, decelerating from 2.3% in November, the Ministry of Internal Affairs said Tuesday. The reading was the weakest since June 2022 and matched economists' consensus forecast. According to Reuters, the Mayo Clinic, a nonprofit medical center based in Rochester, Minnesota, on Monday said it will partner with Silicon Valley startup Cerebras Systems to develop artificial intelligence models for the healthcare industry. The Mayo Clinic, which has three major campuses in the U.S. in addition to locations in the U.K. and United Arab Emirates, will use computing chips and systems from Cerebras to tap into decades of anonymized medical records and data to develop its own AI models. According to Bloomberg, war over Taiwan would have a cost in blood and treasure so vast that even those unhappiest with the status quo have reason not to risk it. Bloomberg Economics estimate the price tag at around $10 trillion, equal to about 10% of global GDP, dwarfing the blow from the war in Ukraine, COVID pandemic and global financial crisis, China's rising economic and military heft, Taiwan's burgeoning sense of national identity, and fractious relations between Beijing and Washington mean the conditions for a crisis are in place. With cross-strait relations on the ballot, Taiwan's January 13 election is a potential flashpoint. Few put a high probability on an imminent Chinese invasion. The People's Liberation Army isn't massing troops on the coast. According to Reuters, the dollar paused its rally on Tuesday as traders reaffirmed their bets for a slew of Federal Reserve rate cuts this year on the belief that inflation in the U.S. is slowing sufficiently. In cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin hovered near its strongest level since April 2022 on growing anticipation of imminent approvals of spot Bitcoin exchange-traded funds. According to Reuters, Airbus is nearing an order from Delta Airlines for dozens of wide-body jets including X-Tray 351,000 aircraft, industry sources told Reuters. Depending on last-minute negotiations, a deal could be made public as early as Friday when the U.S. carrier reports its fourth-quarter earnings, they said. According to Reuters, NASA is set to delay its next few missions to the moon under a key program as technical hurdles mount with the various spacecraft it intends to use to get there, according to four people familiar with NASA's plans. The U.S. Space Agency is expected to announce the plans on Tuesday after spending months tracking progress with contractors and considering changes to the Artemis program, a multi-billion dollar effort that includes returning the first astronauts to the moon since the last Apollo mission in 1972. According to Reuters, Australian retail sales surged in November as shoppers feasted on Black Friday bargains, though analysts suspect spending was merely borrowed from the future and the gains will reverse in December. Data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics out on Tuesday showed retail sales jumped 2.0% on a seasonally adjusted basis in November, rebounding from a revised 0.4% dip in October and above market forecasts of a 1.2% increase. According to Reuters, Germany's Bayer will continue its expansion into the U.S. despite its November announcement that its promising blood-thinner candidate failed to demonstrate superiority over a competing medicine, the drugmaker's pharmaceuticals head Stefan Ulrich said on Monday. Bayer's experimental anticoagulant Asundexian could still be a blockbuster if its second trial for stroke prevention reads out positively, Ulrich told Reuters at the J.P. Morgan Health Conference in San Francisco. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin consolidated after a surge past $47,000 on bets that the U.S. is poised to approve the launch of the nation's first exchange-traded funds investing directly in the world's largest digital asset. The token dipped to $46,770 as of 8.56 a.m. in Singapore on Tuesday after a 6.5% jump on Monday in the U.S. Its new year climb now stands at 10%, contrasting with drops over the same period in stocks and gold. The crypto market expects a green light for U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs by a January 10 deadline. According to Bloomberg, oil held a sizable drop triggered by signs of a weaker physical market, including a deep pricing cut by OPEC plus leader Saudi Arabia. West Texas Intermediate traded near $71 a barrel after declining by more than 4% on Monday to unwind all of the prior week's gain, with Brent above $76.
Riyadh reduced its prices more than had been expected. According to Reuters, Asia Partners, a Singapore-headquartered private equity firm that focuses on the tech sector in Southeast Asia, said on Tuesday it had raised $474 million for its second fund. The International Finance Corp., a World Bank unit, joined as a new investor. According to Reuters, Asia's stock indexes were mostly higher Tuesday after a tech-led surge on Wall Street as investors await the next set of U.S. inflation numbers due this week, which could hint at when the Federal Reserve might start cutting interest rates. MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan was up 0.5%, after U.S. stocks ended the previous session with gains. According to Reuters, Taiwan's ruling party presidential candidate Lai ching te said on Tuesday he would maintain the status quo if elected, and remain open to engagement with Beijing under the principle of equality and dignity. Taiwan votes on Saturday for a new president and parliament, in an election that China, which views the island as its own territory despite the strong objections of Taipei's government, has cast as a choice between war and peace. According to Bloomberg, Severe flooding across Australia's far northeast last month has washed away sugar crops and damaged key rail infrastructure, with the industry expected to see production losses when the harvest begins later this year. Some farms have lost as much as 60% of their sugar crop after tropical cyclone Jasper unleashed heavy rain and floods in Queensland state, said Dan Galligan, chief executive officer of industry group Cane Growers. Assessments are still ongoing to determine the full extent of the damage, he added. According to Bloomberg, fresh from getting a big call right on yields toward the end of last year, former bond king Bill Gross just signaled he is now steering clear of treasuries. Ten-year U.S. debt is overvalued, with similar dated treasury inflation protected securities at a 1.80% yield the better choice if one needs to buy bonds, I don't, he wrote in a post on X. According to Reuters, Mercedes-Benz launched a new virtual assistant at the CES Electronics Trade Fair on Monday capable of providing context-based suggestions and engaging in dialogue with users, signaling another step forward in the use of artificial intelligence in cars. The assistant can speak in different tones of various emotions and ask intelligent questions to clarify what exactly is being asked, the company said. According to Bloomberg, a raft of proposed new Chinese gaming curbs has wiped out $32 billion from Tencent Holdings Limited stock. The declines may not be over, looking at moves in the options market. In a bearish sign, put options open interest has been rising relative to call options on the shares of China's most valuable firm and its smaller rival NetEase Inc. since Beijing unveiled plans for a new round of restrictions on December 22. The volatility skew shows investors have sharply paired their bullish positions on Tencent stock as they await the end of a consultation on the guidelines on January 22. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of Japan announced buying of 10-year to 25-year debt that suggested it will purchase less of those bonds in all of January, in line with what it signaled late last year. With yields globally facing downward pressure, the BOJ offered to buy 150 billion yen of 10 to 25-year debt. That compared with a minimum of 100 billion yen that the central bank initially indicated it would buy in its quarterly plan, and with the 150 billion yen that it purchased on December 25th. The amounts for other tenors were left unchanged. According to Reuters, Alaska Air said on Monday its technicians found some loose hardware in the door plug area on some of its Boeing 737 MAX 9 fleet. U.S. regulators grounded 171 MAX 9 planes after a door plug panel blew off an Alaska Airlines operated flight not long after taking off from a Portland, Oregon, airport on Friday, forcing pilots to scramble to land the plane safely. According to Reuters, TikTok owner ByteDance said on Tuesday it is in talks with multiple prospective buyers of its gaming assets, including the world's largest video games company, Tencent as the Chinese social media firm retreats from the gaming industry. Talks are ongoing but no deal has been reached, a ByteDance spokesperson told Reuters. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen will meet with top Egyptian finance officials in Washington on Tuesday, the Treasury Department said, amid talks between Cairo and the International Monetary Fund on additional financing help. Egypt already struggling with high foreign debt levels, has been hit hard by the war in the neighboring Gaza Strip, 
which threatens to disrupt tourism bookings and natural gas imports, and recent attacks on Red Sea ships. According to Reuters, schoolteacher Bob Sauer said he took a flashlight to his tree-filled backyard on Sunday evening on the small chance he might find a plane part that had torn off an Alaska Airlines jet on Friday at an altitude of about 16,000 feet. U.S. authorities investigating the incident on the Boeing 737 MAX 9 that depressurized the plane, leading to an emergency landing, had asked people in the Cedar Hills suburb of Portland, Oregon to look out for the missing door plug as a vital piece of evidence. According to Bloomberg, battery maker LG Energy Solution Limited badly missed fourth-quarter earnings estimates amid weaker demand for electric vehicles and a drop in lithium prices that hurt revenue. Shares were little changed in Seoul. Operating profit for three months ended December 31 rose 42% year-on-year to 338.2 billion won, LG Energy Solutions said in a filing Tuesday. But that compared to a 607.7 billion won median estimate analysts were looking for. According to Bloomberg, SK Hynix Inc.'s market value is likely to double over the next three years as the company evolves and improves its technology according to Chief Executive Officer Kwok No Yung. The memory maker became South Korea's second most valuable company in December, behind only arch-rival Samsung Electronics Company, as it benefited from the surge in demand for artificial intelligence gear. NVIDIA Corpy's gold standard AI accelerators use SK Hynix's high bandwidth memory extensively, giving it an edge on Samsung and American competitor Micron Technology Inc. According to Bloomberg, Carta Inc., a fintech firm that works with startups, is getting out of the stock sale business following a controversy over its use of customer data. In a blog post Monday night, Carta Chief Executive Officer Henry Ward said the company will stop its work in secondary share trading, a business it was pushing into alongside its service managing startups' investor information, our cap tables. According to Bloomberg, President Xi Jinping vowed to deepen an anti-corruption campaign spanning several critical sectors, a move that risks freezing spooked decision-makers and hampering China's fragile economic recovery. The Chinese leader singled out the finance, energy, pharmaceutical and infrastructure sectors, as well as state-owned enterprises, as targets of fresh scrutiny at a meeting of the Communist Party's anti-graft agency on Monday, according to state media. According to Bloomberg, Donald Trump said he hopes any U.S. economic crash happens this year and not during his prospective second term. We have an economy that's incredible, when there's a crash, I hope it's going to be during this next 12 months because I don't want to be Herbert Hoover, Trump, the Republican presidential front-runner, told host Lou Dobbs in an interview broadcast Monday on an online platform run by Mike Lindell, an entrepreneur and Trump supporter. 